So over here, we've got four drive systems locker. This is a auto front locker for the patrol. When you do it up front, you gotta pull the swivel hubs right apart. So we've also got to do a swivel hub kit. I've never done swivel hubs and I've never pulled a different part. So we are all learning today. Also, Jesse is over to give us a hand. So what do you reckon, Jesse? We just jack her up, pull the wheels off and then have a look at the hubs. I think so. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. So whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. Actually, <laughs> I think the first step's crack the wheel nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as you can see, we've got the wheels off. The brake caliper needs to come off. This steering arm, I believe, needs to come off because it's actually attached to the knuckle. So we're going to dive into this front section first. We are going to drop the diff oil. That's probably the first thing you should do because going into the axle side of things, the diff oil can run out and I think my inner axle seals are stuffed, which is why the swivel hubs are leaking in the first place. You can see that hub there is probably the worst one. It's leaking quite a fair bit of diff oils. That's why the seal kit is really good to replace. There's a seal in here that actually stops it. And um, yeah, we're gonna get into it. <laughs> so we've got the caliper off all our arms are off you can see we've got the steering arm back here that's completely off so that means the hub is now basically just free to move around so we need to go into here move our way back until we can actually pull the axles out so we then we can pull the diff center out so jesse we've got four steps done <laughs> I think it was about 806 <laughs> left. Yeah. Common sense, like you obviously start from there and go back, like just keep undoing stuff until you get there, I guess. The hardest part about being a mechanic is figuring out where stuff goes back. Yeah, like you that, pull it apart. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Kingpin bearing. See all the water. See it's they're stuffed, I think. Yeah, I think so. They're rooted, that's had water in it for sure. There you go. All right, we are making pretty good progress here for people who have no idea what they're bloody doing. We basically strip both hubs right down to whatever this knuckle thing here is called. And um, we're leaving all the races and everything in until I actually go to rebuild this. We're just gonna focus on getting the diff out. But we are actually ready to take all the bolts around the diff out and actually pull the center out. As you can see, we just got everything laid out in sort of order. So the way I do it is I work that we pulled this off, then we pulled that off, then that, and then that, and I just work down the line like that. So I know exactly how everything's gonna go back together. As you can see, this side is exactly the same as well. We've got it fully pulled apart. This was the problem child. This is one that was leaking really bad. So this is how a CV should look. It's full of actual grease. And the other side, the short side, you can see that's full of diff oil. And that means the seal that was meant to seal around here, they call that the inner axle seal, that's failed and it's allowed diff uh, oil to move into the CV itself. And it just means that you get premature wear on um, bearings and everything like that. So that is not good. So it's time to pull the center out and then we can actually look at chucking the locker in, which is the exciting part. Then we can do the rebuild process after that. You got the bottom of it? Yep. All right, Jesse, we've got a bloody diff on the ground. We got it. Good work. So that is what a GQ diff looks like, everyone. There's no broken teeth, which is good. So obviously the first thing you do is inspect your diff and figure out if it's actually worth even 
working on it, but it looks pretty good. Um, we do need to measure the backlash, which is the rock back and forth that way. And I do have a dial indicator with me now, so I'll be able to measure that. So I'll get this up on the bench behind us and we'll start disassembling the diff, then figure out how the locker goes in. Um, full drive systems did provide like a very detailed instruction set. So we are gonna be able to nail this pretty easy, thanks to them. So we'll get this up and we'll get working on it. Well, that was a bloody mission, but we got there. We got the diff in the tiny little vise. Hopefully it hangs on pretty good. What we need to do, these are called your carrier bearings and the orientation of this is extremely important. This is the setting of your preload on the diff itself. If we take that off, we are stuffed because I have no idea how to reset that. Firstly, we are going to mark that this needs to go back to this position. This side needs to do the same. And obviously we'll do it on the other side as well. So we'll probably just do some pin punches just to mark which way they go. Once we get that center out onto the bench, we then have to take the crown wheel off. We'll also mark the crown wheels position so we know exactly how that goes back on the plate. The main thing is that we just don't stuff with that preload. And yeah, we just... I've got no idea what I'm doing, so I'm just following <laughs> your lead. I think what I'll do, I actually bought a dial indicator. So what we'll try and do first is we'll set the dial indicator up if I know how to use it and we'll just measure the backlash just to make sure that our pinion gear and our crown wheel are meshing nicely. That's the rock back and forth there that you can hear. Check everything, make sure everything's right while it's out because the hardest thing about doing this is getting the bloody bastard out. Bottom one. We're just marking the position so we know one goes back to one. Two goes back oh, to two, yeah. three goes back to three. So from reading the instructions correctly, we need to be between 0 0.008 and 0 0.016 of an inch. Now, when we go over to my dial indicator, it's in millimeters, you can see just there. But as I rock it, you can see we're going up to 22. Right there, oh, right there, it's 22. 0.22 millimeters is 0 0.08 of an inch. So well within the specs, but what we need to do is check that on four different rotations. So we'll turn this and do each basically quarter of the crown wheel. And um, that way it will actually tell us that this diff is good to go. But so far it's bloody mint. Righto, the crown wheel is now off and what we're replacing is these, is these planetary gears in here. There's a roll pin on this side that we need to just smack out and then we basically have to put our locker in. So smash that dog out and get to it. Uh, saying to check for the wear around this shaft which I can't even feel lip on it, so it's so pretty good. And we just slide until these gears come out. Righto, it's time to assemble our locking mechanism. Now, we have this base plate. It's very important to take these thrust washers, thrust, thrusting washers off these planetary gears. They are found on the back pull them off. They, with the dab of grease, go on the back of here. Then you've got this interlocking plate. Now that goes into the center. It's what locks the locker into place. And then that pin that we just shot out sits through the center. And we also have a spacer that just goes in with the big flat side facing up. So that is how it goes. And what we need to do is do like a rough assembly, put it together, measure the tolerances, make sure it's all fine. And then we can continue with the assembly, you pull it all apart again and we do it the, the right way.
back in, which means we're now complete with the locker assembly and we can start reassembling the dog into the patrol. You can see we've got the pins in and they're all nice and tight. Everything's working the way it should. All the clearances have been checked. Everything is good. What we need to do now is drop the crown wheel back on, reinstall all the bolts. We're gonna clean these with brake cleaner, put a bit of Loctite on, reinstall them with torque specs that are correct. And then we are right to chuck this back in the diff housing. Exactly the same. Now I can put it back in the car. All right, as you can see, that locker is bang in the middle. We have checked our backlash and it is exactly the same as it was before. So I'm assuming that our end caps are right. Torque them to spec, bit of Loctite on the bolt. We are ready to chuck her back under the car. I think we've honestly done a pretty bloody good job for two blokes that have no idea what we're doing today. We're just sort of winging it. We're reading instructions and either of us can barely read. So that's pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. We stuffed it up like probably 20 <laughs> times, but you guys are only seeing the good stuff. So let's get under Jesse, get her in. The next day. So we managed to get the diff center back in its housing. So that is bloody great. We are looking good to move onto these hubs now. Now, like I said, I've never actually rebuilt these hubs. So it's gonna be a bit of a learning curve for me, but I'm sure I can figure it out. Now, the hardest part for me is this bloody dog getting in my way. All the time, get out of here Daisy, get out of here bud. Now the hardest part about rebuilding this for me is when I pull something apart, I lay it in order. Sort of like I explained before. Now to put all this back together, I need to clean all the parts, which obviously is removing it from the order that I have them in, because I'm gonna put them all inside a bucket and degrease them properly. That means that all these parts that are in order are now gonna be out of order, and I'm not really gonna know how to put them back together unless I leave the parts on the other side in order or just go off the exploded diagram. I'm sure I probably could do that. So from Super Cheap, I managed to pick up a pretty big bucket, also a scrubbing brush and just some concentrate degreaser. Rather than use all those aerosol cans, I think it's better to just use the concentrate at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is disassemble all the parts out of the hub that I need to disassemble and we can give it a bubble bath, get all the grease off it and then we can start reassembling. <laughs> So I was just knocking these uh, kin pin bearing racers out of the hub. They go in there and underneath that, they have these little caps. And these caps sit inside first and then the bearing race on top and you hit it through from the bottom. Now my bearing races were very, very, very tight in there. Now a lot of people damage these like I have getting them out. So I'm gonna need to replace these and they don't come in the kit, which is a real pain in the butt. They're $25 each and I need four of them now, so. Rip. So I'm definitely not gonna be able to finish the hubs tonight. So what I'm gonna do is just get everything cleaned up and then hopefully I can pick them up tomorrow and we can come back and finish this off. What I've done here is I've just got a bucket full of that degreaser. All the parts are having a little bubble bath in there, getting rid of all that grease. And I've also got the wheel bearings in there cause I want them to be nice and clean. I'll rinse these off with a hose and then they can dry overnight. I'll do the other side as well and that way everything is clean. I also got to do the knuckle and the rotor and hub assembly there. I'm also going to try and clean the CVs out tonight. And then once that's all done, I'll just lay it all out nice and neat. And then we are ready to rebuild them once I get that part. So I'm going to start scrubbing these parts up and get them nice and bloody shiny. You bloody mad little dog.
All right, we are back for round three with this locker situation. I'm hoping tonight we can get these hubs rebuilt and finish up this job. In the last couple of clips, you would have seen me absolutely destroy those little tin plates that hold the grease into the pinion bearings. Now, I actually managed to get a hold of four of these brand new. They are a Nissan part number. That's it there. So I got four of these dogs and I also did go to Superior and get some trail safe inner axle seals. The reason I got these is because everyone, I mean, everyone is telling me that the seals that come in our rebuild kit always leak and these inner axle seals are like a double seal. So they shouldn't leak and um, there's been a lot of success across the years with this. So I definitely recommend if you're doing this to get them, they're about 45 bucks. You know, that's not too bad for insurance to know that you won't have to pull this apart again when the diff oil mixes with the grease and creates slop. You don't have to repack it all and redo it all and do a new seal anyway, so. So basically got everything cleaned and ready to go. So I'm gonna jump in and start reassembling these hubs. Hopefully I don't stuff any more seals or anything for that matter that is gonna stop me redoing this. So without further ado, let's get into rebuilding these hubs. So I'm greasing the inside of this seal here just so when I slide the axle in, it doesn't get caught or bind up or anything. I always tend to grease just the inside of seals. I never grease the outside just so they don't accidentally pop out. G'day again, it is day four and we are finally done with the locker. As you just seen, I topped the diff up. I've also checked that the locker is engaging and disengaging as per the instructions and everything is fine. Alicia actually had to come out in the shed to help me test it because it is a two man job, um, but she didn't want to be on camera, so that's why I didn't film it. But when it was still up on it, jack stands, we made sure that the wheel can unlock each way on both sides and it checked out bloody mint. So we now have a bloody locker in Cole, which is gonna make him perform a thousand times better off-road. We were basically only two wheel drive with an LSD 
prior to installing this locker and now we're basically three wheel drive with an LSD. Hopefully we can get a locker in the back someday when I can afford it, that would be bloody mint. Now once again, huge shout out to Full Wheel Drive Systems for sending me out this locker. It is something that has always been on the to-do list for Cole, but I've never had the money to pull the trigger on like a $1,600 to $2,000 locker from ARB or anything like that. So Full Drive Systems actually messaged me about the auto locker and after doing some research on it, a lot of people do run them in the front of the patrols and they all seem to have good things to say about them. So I'm keen to try this out. One thing I do wanna mention is that the auto locker is only about $600 and they do a lot of sales. So if you shop the sale, you can get it for about $550, $500 maybe. Um, so look out for sales on Full Drive Systems page and then grab yourself a locker. Because in my opinion, for 600 bucks for a locker, it's very, very worth it. Now there is only one thing left to do and that's test coal out, which might be the next episode, but the radiator that I just put in it, which was secondhand, is actually leaking again. If I can't get one tomorrow off Facebook, another one I probably won't go wheel in tomorrow, which means that the next video will be on the trailer, not on coal, but it is really nice to have coal back in the shed for some bloody mods. And this video actually marks the start of coal 2.0. If you don't know what that is, it's version two of this build, which means that it just gets more and more mods. If you're not subscribed, please do so now to keep up with all the content that is coming. We have heaps and heaps to do on this thing, and I'm very excited. But that is all I have time for today. If you like this video, drop a like. If you want to comment, drop a comment too. I love reading your guys' comments. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.